So let's say you want to do a live VR production with uh, 3D goggles and everything. It would be very important that your video feeds are totally synchronous. And then you can use two ATEM switches and synchronize them, make sure your commands arrive at them at the same time so that you have clean cuts. Because what would happen if uh, two ATEM switches are not in sync and you cut both of them, but then one is a frame ahead than the other one, then for the eyes it would feel like a, a strange transition. So I have uh, made a small drawing and here at the office today we have um, uh, made a small test configuration where we have done a lot of research on how and what is possible. So first of all, uh, my my uh, setup is I have ATEM switcher number one and number two and they go into a, let's call it ATEM test switcher, uh, which just makes a split screen so I can see ATEM switcher one and number two's output on this screen. So um, then I make a uh, script with one of our controllers that will instruct ATEM switcher one and two to, uh, to cut between black and white, for instance. So on the split screen, ideally, I would see a full screen changing from black to white to black. But if the two switches are out of sync, then one of them would change one frame before the other one. And we need to get some information about how can we control this? Can we guarantee that this uh, uh, cut will happen synchronously between the two switches? That's what we are after today. So in theory, it also is so if these two switches are not are locked to a common tri-level sync, we will have two video signals where the vertical sync is are not lined up. It would look like this, so in time, some milliseconds before the other signal, uh, the, the frame will start on the one switch and not the other one. So for instance, if I send a cut command right here, then it will arrive uh, so that it's executed on the next vertical sync for the first switcher, but it will arrive here on the second switcher, which means that it will cut before the other one because it has a vertical sync right there. Okay, so what if I instead had the cut command coming in right here? Okay, so then the first switcher would execute at this point and the other switcher at this point. And actually, when that arrives in uh, this switcher that frame synchronizes those two, we will experience um, a, a perfect transition. But the problem is that can I make sure or can I know anything about how large this space in time is and this space in time? And it's, it's not even worth trying. What you need to do is to make sure those two sources are synchronized. Okay, so let's take a look at the test configuration, which I just explained on the whiteboard. And you see it blinking here on the screen. So we have white, black, white, black. And right now the switches are not synchronized. So you can see that it seems we have actually hit a pretty good spot in the, um, in the signal where those two switches are currently uh, lined up with each other and things seems to work out well. And now we just have to wait and see that it gets out of sync. Come on. Actually it did so earlier. So maybe I'll just cut the power and we'll see that this happens. Okay. <clears throat> So a little about what, what we have here. We have an 8 and 2 me Production Studio 4K. I have a Production Studio 4K here, and those are the two ATEM switcher 1 and 2. And then I have a ATEM Television Studio HTVS, the, the, the new one from, from March, which is where the two signals come together. And um, we're now just waiting for these two. So now you can actually see they go just opposite each other. So that's great. Um, but I think I can make them synchronous now. And now you see the effect. You see how the one is um, um, is cutting before the other one. There's one frame difference of these two signals now. Okay, and now they, they got into sync again, which is simply because I'm so lucky to get, have my commands arrive to the switches now in that perfect timing, and now it gets out of sync once more. Okay, so what I wanna do is to put um, reference in on this one, so now this gets synchronized, and then I do the same for this one. And then we should see the two sources are now perfectly synced, and uh, I hope, uh, yeah, okay, there we saw the, the, the one syncing up. So what will happen now is that they are, they are not gonna drift from each other like we saw just before, because if we go back to the whiteboard, what happened is that now 
they are both time-wise synchronous. So, oh, that's not beautiful. But then, you see here, like this. All right. So, basically, no matter where I send my commands, I am certain that the cut will happen at the same time. And then again, am I? So the question is, of course, now that the, the two sources are synchronous, then uh, how much space do I have to send the commands? I mean, what will happen if, because sending a command will also take some time, I couldn't send them in parallel. I have to send first one and then another one because I'm using a CPU and not an FPGA, for instance. So therefore, the question is, if I send a command and the time it takes to send the command would be like one millisecond, then could it happen that I sent the command so that it accidentally arrives on the one before the vertical sync and then on the other one after the vertical sync and then I would still have this, this cut slip where one frame is ahead of the other one. And what I found is that it's, um, I mean, the, the effect is real, but the time it takes to send two cut commands is really, really small. Um, but let's assume that it would take up to 10 milliseconds then what we can do is to use the vertical sync as a timing reference for when we send the signal because if we send it just after the vertical sync we have all the time until the next vertical sync to get commands sent to the ATEM switcher and whatever we can load to the ATEM switcher within this time frame is likely to be executed on the next vertical sync. So it's actually pretty forgiving. The question is, how can we align the commands with the vertical sync? And of course, we have a solution for that. So here on the table, I have um, done some, some work on that. And we have a sync generator, which um, inputs to the Scottwino sitting here, a, um, a vertical sync for each time we, um, and you can see it here in the, the oscilloscope, actually. Hopefully you can, okay, here you can see. Okay, so this pulse, this pulse on the oscilloscope is the vertical sync, right? So it's a 200 microseconds wide low pulse, which goes into the Scatuino and which helps us to make sure that we are sending the commands right after the vertical sync. And what we found is that we could actually send a cut command. I think I should maybe turn this one off now. Um, all right. I could actually send a cut command right after the vertical sync here and send the second cut command something like almost 16 milliseconds later. So just before the vertical sync here and it would get executed on the next one. So that's actually pretty nice results because uh, what you could fear is that we had just a very narrow time window to send commands or that they would somehow be located differently like starting maybe 10 milliseconds after the vertical sync and then ending some time after but in fact we have all this time period to get it done and that works out perfectly we haven't seen it fail so far anyway